Well, I think the, the um, fundamental role that SFL played uh, was um, a discovery that kicked it off. There were, there were two stages, you know. But the first one was that even when I looked at, you know, I, because I definitely wanted to talk about language of image and also language of language in media. And so, you know, um, there were no theories, even American functional theories, which I liked, long acre and so on, they were still about language as a whole. You know, so how, how, do you, how do you do language of the media? So the concept of register immediately, you know, was a big eye opener. You said, okay, you know, and the concept of register being related to a certain way of using language. For, media, for language of media, that was, that was step one, the idea of register. You know, even though now I don't use it a lot, it just was a breakthrough. Uh, from the point of view of being able to not have to talk about language in general, but being able to talk about the language of dot, dot, dot. You know, and that, that was number one. Number two was that, uh, which I have obviously written in various places, that um, I then, only then, really clearly saw that um, what... Uh, I actually studied uh, a year in Paris with Christian Metz, who's a film semiotician in the Bartian School. And uh, unfortunately, by this time, you know, he had abandoned linguistics, which I didn't know, and he was into psycho psychoanalysis. So I learned a lot of psychoanalysis, but he was not to be moved to go back to his um, linguistically inspired stage, which was very... Um, although there were other people there who still did it and who were interesting, um, like Michel Marie, for example, an excellent film scholar, um, who wrote about dialogue, for example, in film already then. But... Um, Essentially, you know, but why um, Chris, Christian Metz came to, um, uh, didn't get anywhere with the idea of the language of the film, um, or not completely nowhere, but not as far as you could get, was because he was uh, basically looking for equivalence to form classes. He was basically saying, do we, have a, do we have something like the word, or do we have something like this or that? And of course you don't, you know. So the, uh, the, the, I, when I realized what kind of approach, the approach of systemic linguistics, I saw actually this is not grammar at all, this is semantics, you know. Uh, hence, hence the ease with, and, and the neglect you know, with which people moved into other languages, for example, you know, um, which otherwise you would never even want to do and which I'm still a bit hesitant about, you know, because it might obscure the difference. So we come to this, you know. Um, on the, I saw immediately that now you could ask the question in a different way. You didn't have to ask, does film have words or clauses which it all doesn't have? But you can ask the communicative function of something or other, you know, of, 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 of um, modality is a prime example, you know. Um, so in language you have um, resources for expressing modality. That are there, is there an equivalent in, 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 in images? You know? And um, so that was the thought. And then you can say, okay, now I just combine the, the, um, the way that Halliday have, has sketched the domain of meaning with the, uh, with sig and, but learn for, about the signifiers, partly from my own experience as a filmmaker and partly from, you know, paying close attention to people who actually write about the signifiers of, um, of images. And so Gunther and I hit upon Rudolf Arnheim as an absolute master in the field, you know, even though he used Gestalt uh, psychology, uh, between the cracks of Gestalt psychology, he was a, an absolutely brilliant semiotician. You know, he just didn't generalize these things. But in terms of looking at the signifiers, you know, it, it was all there. The, all the things we've been talking about, vectors, you know, center, margin, you name it, you know. But it was not related to, uh, to a theory of meaning in the same way. Um, when he talked about meaning, it was in the incidental application of it to specific images. But you can bring the two together, and then you have a semiotics uh, that of, of of the image, for example, or something else, which uh, which draws on on the signifiers that are specific, but still, you know, ultimately um, realizes all a part of the domain of meaning that belongs to the culture as a whole, you know, rather than actually to language, but more to the culture. So that was the thing. On the other hand, um, you know, um, and so that's what we did. And then, of course, comes the point where you say, and Gunther was as usually ahead of me in that, you know, um, he's always a step ahead, um, that, saying, like, but now we have to pay attention to the differences too. You know, and we don't necessarily would do that in exactly the same way, but it is the same discussion that you can have. You can write a grammar, a systemic grammar of another language that's not English, 
you know, and it goes, you can go very far, but there also comes a point at which you then have to ask, how is that language actually different, you know? And even though it's an, even if it's another European language, you know, you have to go back, um, you have to put your Wolfian hat on again, which is, you know, what any good analyst should also be doing. And um, so we are, we are now, we're getting more to that point, you know, that it is becoming easier to not drop what we have gained and what we've learned, but also to look at those kind of differences, you know.